Jackie, thanks everybody, thanks to Aina for arranging this occasion. It's very important that we come and we learn and teach each other. Yes. Um, I, I, I thought Sister Jackie was about to say the long walk to freedom just now when she said the long road <laughs> to reparations. That will happen one day. And um, the long walk to freedom, she assures me, is part of the long walk to, or, or the long road of reparations. Yes, it is. I want to. I want to begin this by saying something, making a proclamation that Walter Rodney always said, only a people could free themselves. Reparations make no sense if Lee, is what the name? Lee Day. If Lee Day or somebody Knight do it for us. If anybody else is involved in reparations, those persons have got to be involved as an instrument of us there. under our own control and direction. We're going to come back to this just now. How are you saying that to our Ten minutes. <laughs> Sorry. I've got my eyes on you. I didn't know that. Everybody heard you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> now, reparations make no sense if we are not doing it for ourselves. And it makes no sense if it's not a Pan-African approach. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got to be very clear that we got to hold hands with all the Africans around the world to do this. That's the only way we could achieve reparations for several reasons. One is that all Africans have been damaged by, by um, what has done to be, been done to us. Another thing is the best strategy is for us to fight a common fight. We have been isolated and defeated over and over again because our oppressors have pitted one group of us against another group. Yeah. 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 Now, the history of reparations begins when the first injury was inflicted upon us. And we need to be very clear about that. Reparations then start last year when a few um, middle class intellectuals in the Caribbean with PhDs got together and started talking about it. Reparations did not begin when at the beginning of the, 19, the 1990, 1901, Bernie Grant, the late great Bernie Grant, got us, uh, some of us together and started pushing for reparations here. Reparations did not begin when Rastafari for many generations <coughs> kept reparations afloat in the minds of many of us through the term repatriation. All of those are relevant to our understanding of the fight for reparations, but it began long before then. Since the first Europeans went to Africa and began their depredations, our people, the true leaders, began to plot how to get rid of them. And reparations began even before then because there were some rascals in Africa 1,000 years before the Europeans, and I mean the Arabs. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. yeah. And we must not forget mm -hmm. that Africa has been wronged, mm -hmm. all of us, by a number of people. Yeah. And we must discount none of those That's bad right. when right. we calculate who must feel the, the burden of repairing. Mm. But even money and them giving us back, I'm willing to argue, is not the most important part of reparations. I'm not saying it's unimportant. The most important part of reparations is we taking back ourselves, our minds, yes. yeah. our history, yeah. our culture, yeah. our identity, mm -hmm. our ability to act on our own behalf. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So reparations is an occasion for repairing, for reclaiming, for refurbishing, and for becoming ourselves again. What's this history of reparations? Let me go quickly. Now, I said that reparations started as soon as the first Arab and the first European went there. I want to make a big jump to territory that many of us are more familiar with. 
and talk about the Caribbean, because most of us got to focus on the Caribbean. I don't mean to exclude other people, but this is just for the purposes of today. I don't mean to exclude other aspects of our um, experience. But, you know, African people, from the inception, as I said, started to resist, started to say, this is wrong. I've got to <coughs> restore my freedom. I've got to repair my lack of freedom by getting freedom. <clears throat> so in the march from the interior to the barracoons, there was resistance. In the barracoons, there was resistance. Aboard the slave ship in the Middle Passage, there was resistance. When we were landed in the several Caribbean territory or American, South, um, uh, uh, part of North America, Central America, or South America, there was resistance. We all know about Haiti. I hope we all know the tremendous yeah. significance yes. of Haiti. Yes. 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 There's no time to go in details, but let me just say with the risk of repeating what some people know, that the people of Haiti launched the first republic, the first revolution against Europeans and defeated the world's superpower, yeah. France, under Napoleon Bonaparte twice, yeah. then defeated the British who would soon overtake Napoleon as the world's strong man, defeated them, defeated a Spanish army, and then defeated an army of local whites and mulattoes. This is a tremendous feat of African arms. Mm. It's as though the Jamaican army of today took on the United States with all its might <laughs> and defeated the United States twice, mm. then took on, which is the next biggest army, China, defeat them, and then took on Russia and defeat them. All in the space of a few years. This is no laughing matter. Mm. And we don't know this. And defeat France again. Be yes. And defeat up a second. We don't know this because it's not in our interest, mm -hmm. according to some people, to know it. Mm. And I'm talking about African agency here. Mm -hmm. I'm showing us how we must empower ourselves. Yeah and make certain that we run our own history, run our own fight for reparations, run everything. Only a people could free themselves. If you leave it to other people, they're going to act in their interest, not in our interest. Yeah. 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 All over the enslaved African world, Africans escaped from the plantations and went to set up communities of resistance, which Europeans call Maroon, Palenque, um, Kilambush, which is an African word, and a number of other things. What were they trying to do? What kind of life kind of, were they trying to organize? You check it. All of them were organizing African-centered existence yes. yeah. in those maroon communities. Yes. Those people were teaching us something that we'd better learn. Mm -hmm. You know, they were saying, we are Africans. We demand freedom and we demand to organize ourselves according to our own African traditions. Immediately after the legal termination of physical enslavement in the British controlled territories, which is what happened in 1838, it wasn't emancipation, it was the legal termination of physical enslavement. The possibility of working towards emancipation arose. And many of us are still on that road, because many of us are still not emancipated. Now, Africans began to repair ourselves by constructing free villages. Mm. And those villages were run initially on African principles. Don't have time to go into them. But that movement was supported all over the Caribbean yeah. by Europeans who sent the church yeah. and who used the state. Yeah. In Guyana, they, they did immigration. They multiplied and divided the labor force. Multiply in the sense that they swamp it with num the number of laborers, divided it in that they brought in different cultures and they played Indians against Africans, Portuguese against everybody, and so on. The Portuguese were promoted to middle class status at the expense of the Africans who invented the retail trade in Guyana. I mean, lots of things happen. It's a whole history. <coughs> what I'm saying is that our movement for an African centered existence that was independent of the plantation was defeated by a combination of things in the decades immediately after 1838. Now, I say that because I want to say that our people were proclaiming an African-centered existence. 
I want to touch also that while Africans were busy making freedom in that era and the repression was coming down, you had more and me. Mm -hmm. mm. Marcus Marvey came up, I'm jumping. Rastafari came up. People like Walter Rodney came up, all in response to the continued necessity for carry forward <coughs> the importance of repairing ourselves. Repairing ourselves is a big job. Yeah. It's not only learning our history, it's learning quite a number of other things. Now, in repairing ourselves, we have to constantly clarify a number of things. One, who we are. Who are we? It's a very important question each person mm -hmm. must be able to answer with some degree of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who you are, well then you're like a rudderless ship upon a stormy sea. You know some of us, we're Adventists one day, next day we're Catholic, next you see us there we're Muslim, and so we're drifting all over the place. We don't want to return to ourselves. You know, we've got to know who we are, our history, our identity. We've got to be organized. How about our motivation? What kind of disposition we have? Are we ready for the fight? Are we willing to be ready for this fight? What's our mission in life? Singly and collectively. Now each one of us, doesn't matter who we are, what profession or occupation we pursue or don't pursue, each one of us must make our lives an occasion for doing reparations. Because reparations mean repairing ourselves, reclaiming ourselves. Here's another question, who are our lives? Who are our lives? How do they differ from us? Our lives are not us, they are people who might have the same or some of the same interests as us. But we often make the mistake of treating our allies as our friends, as our cousins, as ourselves. You know? And, you know, I say this because it's critically important mm -hmm. that we understand right. politics and we understand that only we must be in control mm -hmm. of our fight for reparations. Here's another one. This might sound obvious. Who are our enemies? Mm -hmm. How do they differ from us? Mm -hmm. What are the capacities of the enemy? What weapons they have at their disposal? Yeah. What is their disposition? These are important things. I claim to be a, a, um, a scholar, a teacher. I have a role in reparation. You know, I must teach people about reparations. I must go and research about reparations. I must do something to further reparations. Now, that white law form we talk about, my proposal is that we monitor them. You know, my proposal is that we tell them that it is vulturistic that they enter our struggle for reparations and benefit more than the victims. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. There is yeah. something yes. objectionable. Mm -hmm. There is something, you know, you, you can find a word for me. You know, fundamentally offensive, especially in the context <clears throat> of historical ripoffs by white people posing as our saviors. We know Band Aid and all of that kind of thing. Yeah. Right? That whole aid business has given Africa AIDS. Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. And we need to be very clear in our analysis. That's why I lead back to how I started. Only a people could free ourselves. Mm -hmm. We cannot depend upon other people to free us. So we've got to ma monitor that law, that law form. We have, as a collective here, to <coughs> become the watchdog of our people. <coughs> we've got to monitor what's going on with CARICOM. We've got to be able to tell a mass of people here, all over where our people are, what the facts are. We've got to be able to make certain that those CARICOM leaders do not sign for 10 billion tomorrow or the next day and say this is a final settlement. 
Hmm. We must say, not in our name. Yeah. 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 If you yeah. sign anything that we don't agree with, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is illegal. Yeah. You're acting treacherously. Yeah. You do not represent us, and therefore you cannot sign on behalf of us. We've got to be aware of the traditional role of many members of the middle class in our communities. Just a warning. I don't think I need to explain that any further, especially when I only have 50 seconds left. <laughs> right? Over. <laughs> Over 50 seconds? OK. The last thing I wanted to say is that the question of reparations has always been with us, both informally in ways that we don't always recognize as reparations. You know, when we fight to wear dreadlocks, it's reparations. You know, when we fight for Kwanzaa, it's reparations. We're repairing ourselves. When we fight for our history. But reparations was raised formally in the history of the Caribbean. And we must know this. The previous speaker, Brother Coburn, said that Europeans always said that Africans are not people, and that's true. They spent a lot of time trying to say that we are not people, or we are not real people, and we never had history, and we never had civilization. There's a reason for that. And the reason for that is, once they could convince themselves, or other people, that we are not people, they could treat us any way they like, any way they like as yes. though we are not people. And in, in the abolition process that some people say ended in 1838 in the British dominated part of the Caribbean, 20 million pounds, which is a lot of billions in today's money, a staggering amount of money, was given. You know who got that money? The enslavers. Now, remember, these are mass murderers, yeah. mass rapists, mm -hmm. yeah. Some, uh, uh, mass terrorists, mm -hmm. you just name it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, these are the people mm -hmm. who were paid. Mm -hmm. The people who suffered and continue to suffer mm -hmm. are us. Yeah. We got nothing. Mm -hmm. I want us to remember this. Yes, yes. Because this is part mm -hmm. of the meaning of our fight. We don't have enough time to compare with the Jews. You know, every time you hear about Holocaust, you think about what happened to the Jews. I don't mean to disparage anybody's struggle or anybody's injury. Yeah. Mm. But what Hitler did to the Jews is a small thing compared to what those people were, were, did and are still doing to were, us. Yeah. Including yeah. the Jews. Some. You know, including some of the Jews in indeed. Mm. You know, so we need to be very clear in our understanding mm. of what we need to repair among us, mm -hmm. what we need to restore among us, why we need that, who owe us, and how much we owe ourselves. Because, remember how I started, only a people could free themselves.